So, where was I in the story? So Seymour is, he's baptized in the Holy Spirit. He begins to speak in a language he had never learned. And so he continues to teach. Now he has the experience himself. So now he's just not just talking about something he's heard about and read in the Bible. He's actually received it himself. And on Bonnie Bray Street, many others begin to receive this experience. In fact, it's become so infectious and contagious that, the, that history tells us that the crowd becomes so large that it spills out into the yard. Seymour and the others that are leading the meetings realize that they need to move from the house on Bonnie Bray Street to an actual meeting place. And so they move to an old warehouse on Azusa Street. Hence comes the Azusa Street Revival. Anybody ever heard of that? A few of you. That's the history behind the Azusa Street Revival. I wasn't there, but... I get to get in on. I wasn't there on Bonnie Bray, Bray Street. I wasn't there when they moved. They moved the meetings to Azusa Street and Seymour continued to preach, but now he's so concerned about pride that he puts a sack over his head and cuts the eyes out and the mouth out and he doesn't want anybody to see him. He doesn't, it's not about the color of his skin. It's not the fact that he only has one good seeing eye it's just the fact that God is moving in such extraordinary ways people are being filled with the spirit people are being supernaturally healed even in that day at the turn of the 20th century when there wasn't the kind of connections that we have with internet and and and, and transportation people were still getting there from all over the world and this move of God was being noised abroad around the world and Seymour was wearing his sack and often it would just be a prayer meeting and extraordinary pressure extraordinary measures they were they were moving into the extraordinary measures of getting cause this causes for extraordinary measures we got to We've got to get in and get all we can from God. They were, they were getting it. They were, they were pressing in with hunger and they were getting it. God was pouring out. And people were being healed. And maybe later, as we continue this series, I'll bring some of my history books and just read some of the accounts of, of the miracles and the signs and the wonders and the healing. Because even though... We were, we were not there. We're part of the tribe. And we, like El Dad and me Dad, we just, we get to get it. You just got to want it. Are you hungry? What happened to your hunger? Something happened, didn't it? Rewind. I don't know how, Pastor. Well, he does. Just come to him. He'll hit the rewind button. Pew. You seen those movies? Hit the rewind button. Pew. Looking where? <laughs> God will just rewind you all the way back before that happened and He'll set you free, totally remove all that junk in your mind, dividing with the Word of God so that you can be released into the destiny and the purpose that God has for you. And you can get in on what happened at Azusa Street. That was the only historical revival, but by the way, our movement, our what we are specifically connected to as a part of the Assemblies of God along with all other full gospel movements in America was birthed out of the Azusa Street Revival. The various denominations were created and started by man and had their little differences here and differences there but ultimately the core belief that there was more after salvation and that God still moved as he moved in the book of Acts was the core belief of these people and they said some of them tried to go back to their denominational mainline churches but they kicked them out Said we don't want it and so they started their own churches Hence, we have the Assemblies of God and other such full gospel movements because they wanted something more than just dry religion and run-of-the-mill church. They wanted a demonstration 
of the genuine God of the book of Acts. I want that. I don't want anything fake. I don't want to pretend. I know I'm not going to be perfect, but I want to be pure before God. If you're not pure, come on, it's time to confess your hidden sin. If you've already done that, it's not time to beat yourself up and condemn yourself. But, but some of you need to go back before. But as God allows us to go back before, let's, let's, let's realize where we came from. As Eldad and Medad received what Moses and the 70 were receiving, we can have what they had at Azusa Street. I'm telling you, God is he is releasing in the spirit realm the DNA of what happened in Azusa Street. He is releasing the kind of move of God that will be echoed around the world on the earth to normal, quote, ordinary people like us. But what we get will be extraordinary. I'm and so Seymour is putting a sack over his head and people are just still coming. How would you like for your pastor to wear a sack on his head? But they didn't care. Just do it again, God. Getting leads to giving. Because when you get, you want to give. When you're not getting, you want to hoard and be stingy with what you've got because there's a fear of losing and not having enough and for those of you who are nervous right now I'm not talking about just money I'm talking about your life extreme pressures call for extreme measures extraordinary getting we get to tap into what they had in Azusa Street are you hungry? rewind before Go back. <laughs> and as you get, God moves you in position to give. So you get by praying and crying out to God and He starts pouring into you. But then you start praying and giving out. You start praying for others. That prayer language, sometimes it's praying for me, but then other times He takes me to a level I'm praying for others. I don't even know fully who I'm praying for. And God will start waking you up at 3 a.m. And you're no longer just praying for yourself. Now you're praying for somebody else. You're giving. <clears throat> so for all of you that was nervous I was talking about money, I'm talking about sleep. How's that? I thought you would shout there. <laughs> you start giving up enough sleep. <laughs> It'll move you in to start giving up money. <laughs> Woo! He's got a kingdom to build, and he doesn't have to have your money to build it, but he sure will use his money to build it if you'll start living like everything, quote, you have is already his. So he's boss, and I just, you know, if he only asked me for 10%, whew, I came out pretty good <laughs> because most of the time when I'm getting the more I'm getting he starts asking for more than 10% it's like those people who say well that's just Old Testament and we don't have to do that and well, I'm like yeah in, in a way you're you're almost right because even though no actually Jesus in the news says they were doing good the tithe but he just seems to ask me for more than that Mention more than 10%. If do not shout, preach on. <laughs> I'm just telling you what happens to me. I just really start getting and it's like, yeah, they're... It, I don't know. Getting, giving, and then going. He starts sending me. 
he starts sin actually I don't get by with just getting up at 3 a.m. and praying and giving that way I don't get by with just putting money in the plate though that's important because God doesn't have to have what I have to give but he'll certainly use it so he can get it back to me so he can use me to give greater measure he'll sure, certainly take my lunch and multiply it to feed more people but bring me back 12 baskets full left over because he realizes he can trust me with it he's not trying to get anything from me he's trying to get a whole lot to me some of you think I wish God's trying God's trying to take God's trying to take from you really you haven't been getting enough then I mean spirit because he'll show you a whole lot different than that God is trying to get stuff to me but as watch this as I get and as I give it's like then I realize okay that's good mm, extraordinary measures he says go he starts asking me to open my mouth but I'm, I'm you know I, I'm a behind the scenes person you know I'll I'll pray I'll, give, I'll put in the plate I'll give I'll even give my time a little bit but don't ask me to say anything don't ask me to go to Mexico. Don't ask me to go to Africa. Don't. Now, he's not going to ask everybody to do those things, but some of you, he is, he will, he has. You haven't because you're afraid. The more you get, the more you give, the more ready you are to go. But you don't have to go to Africa to win somebody. They're all around us, but God's calling us all to go. You know what they did? They would come to Azusa Street and God would move and they would go and take it back to their cities and to their people. And that's why they would get kicked out of their mainline churches and they would start full gospel churches in their own cities. And it was echoed around the world what was going on in Azusa Street. And I wasn't there, but I was. I am. I'm connected. Somehow I'm interlocked to what happened just beyond 1900. I'm intertwined because I'm a part of an extraordinary tribe of people somehow I'm connected to Seymour somehow somehow the same God burns on the inside of me somehow the same desire that was in his heart burns inside of mine somehow I want to see God move like he moved in Seymour's day and turn cities and nation America nations upside down for his glory but as he does as we get as we give we must be willing to go going has everything to do with obeying when he says do you just do it and that's how you go how do I go do what he says what is going doing what he says as you get and as you give in obedience, then God asks you to respond and act and move. And as you move, you're going. We need five new workers in the nursery. If He asks you to do it, go. We need we need some male counselors to go to the second which will be the primary week that most of our teenage teenagers go to camp on June 11th through the 15th. If he says go, and you can get off work, go. Now, of course, all who work with children and youth have to have a national background check. This isn't picking on anybody. For me to be your pastor and work with your kids, I had to have one. It's just required. But if he asks you to go, go. Thank God for the adults and the sponsors that are with a smaller group at the Arkansas camp this week, about 13 or so of our teenagers. I'm believing they're going to come back and their lives just... You're at work, you're at Walmart, you're... You know that sermon by now, right? So I don't have to preach it again, right? Wrong? What time is it? Depends on what time it is, right? Go. Stand to your feet.